Hello, this is Ben Hollifield, and today I would like to show you a new app I'm calling a Flexible Mapper, an image markup tool. It's for ServiceNow and is currently available on share.servicenow.com. Um, if you don't have this yet, you can come out to share. Just search for Flexible Mapper and you'll find the app. Um, it's available now, it's free, and you can, uh, you can go out and download it and start using it on your instance. So let's hop over and show you a little bit about what it does. Um, so once you download Flexible Mapper, you'll find it over here in your left nav. Um, and what Flexible Mapper is trying to do is it's giving us a rich set of tools to, um, to create dynamic, um, sort of rich, content-heavy maps and images um, to use in your ServiceNow instance. We, we currently have some capability to do some of this stuff with UI pages and with our Google Maps integration, but I wanted something a little bit more flexible, um, a little bit easier to use. And that's what we tried to build here. Um, what we've ended up with is a very rich application. Um, it is extremely flexible, has a, a lot of different possibilities here. Um, so many so that I'm not going to go into a lot of them on this demo today because it would take quite a while. But I have loaded up the update set with a number of sample maps here. So you can go in and dig into these maps um, once you install this and start playing around with it and see what's possible. Um, so I encourage you to do that um, just to get an idea of what you can do. But I'll quickly jump into a few. So on a very simple level, we have this sample, simple floor plan. And if we open this record, we can see that um, everything is very well documented. So I encourage you to turn on annotations by clicking the question mark up here so that you can see all of the options that are available to you on each form. Um, at the top level, we have just a name of your, of your floor plan. You can choose to use an image, um, which will give you the option to use an image URL. That could be an internet URL. It could be a, a local URL to your ServiceNow instance. Um, alternatively, you can choose geographical, where you give us latitude and longitude, and we actually use open street maps to pull in um, geographical coordinates that, that you can use on a real map. For this one, it's an image. Um, we have a number of different things here. You can do read roles, which tells you who's allowed to see this map, write roles that tell you who's allowed to edit this map, and I'll show you what kind of edits are possible here in a moment. Um, we have the capability to allow pop-ups. Pop-ups are little pop-ups from the map markers, from shapes on the map that can contain um, information. Um, in HTML format, and that can include links to other data in your system, to um, you know, incident records, CI records, locations, users, whatever you want to do there. Um, we do have this checkbox for lock map. What that means is once you're finished creating a map and you added all this rich content you want to add, you can lock that map, and so then it becomes a static map, something that's consumable and something that users can't change, so you can publish it out to your, to your instance. Finally, some more options about what things look like. We have line marker, color, um, to allow you to, to to customize the color of things on your map, marker size, what zoom level you want a map to start at. These are interactive, panable, zoomable maps. Um, and we do have a number of defaults over here in properties that I'll show you in a bit um, where you can set the defaults for these, but we also allow you to customize them per map. Um, and we also have this concept of containers. Um, a container is, it, it represents each map marker or shape on the map. And within those containers, you can put content um, and you can apply styles to those, which will make a bit more sense as soon as I show you this map. So we have this map here. Let's go ahead and just launch the map. We launch this, and there we go. This is a map. This is just an image that existed on the internet. And you can see that I've drawn a few shapes and I've placed a few markers around here. Um, and we do all that using the, uh, the palette over here on the side. If you want to add some more, you can click on that and just draw a new rectangle over here. No problem. Um, we can edit these things. I can move that around. I can change the size and then just save it. And um, whenever I do that, it's, it's saving this map. So if I back out, leave this map and then I relaunch it and come back in, you'll see that we've saved that shape. It, it's there. It still exists. Um, in this case, I want to remove that one because that's not one I'm interested in keeping. But within each one of these, we can actually place contents. So here you'll see for the Tools Lab, if I click here, i got a pop-up. This is Tools Lab. Come here to test our latest hammers and enter a drawing to win a new soldering iron. Um, you can add content like that, just simple pop-up stuff. This one has nothing in it right now. This one has some information on the CoreOS Lab. Now here's our scooter racetrack, and you can see I've actually placed a little marker here with a, with a scooter to indicate the starting line. Um, over here at the Howard Street entrance, we have um, giraffe rides. And in this case, um, it's actually not just text. I've created a link here, so you can click on that, and oh, there's our giraffes. Um, that's great. So it's just a map with a bunch of valuable information on here that, um, that you can publish out for your users to consume. And you'll notice here on a lot of these, I have this option to edit container. And if I click that, it's going to take me into the settings for this container. And at the top level, it's just a name and, you know, what it belongs to. But down here, we have the important stuff, contents and styles. So if I hop into contents, um, I can see what's creating the content here. In this case, I just have an HTML type, and it's uh, just, just the text that was listed there in that pop-up. 
Um, I can also choose to use a script type if I prefer. And what this needs to return is it needs to return HTML that will be rendered there, but it enables us to actually go in and do dynamic content um, to like use the user ID or to do queries against certain tables and return the HTML content that is sort of dynamic and rich and can give, give more meaning um, to it than just a, just a static static link would do. In addition, I have the capability to apply styles. And let me bounce out of here and go to one that actually does have some styles attached. We'll go and look at our uh, giraffe container. If we hop in here, we can see the contents there is just the contents for the giraffe rides. If we look at styles, what we've done is we've given this particular marker a unique color. We've also given it a unique marker icon and a size. Um, and that just gives it, you know, sort of a, makes it stand out on the map a bit. Additionally, what we can do um, to make these very dynamic is we can apply conditionally and here we can actually evaluate a script and say under what conditions do I want to apply this style. Um, perhaps I only want to make a certain marker a certain color if certain conditions are met like a, a CI is an error for instance or maybe there are priority one incidents at a certain location and so I can make it only apply when those conditions are met. In addition I can add some content whenever this style is applied do I want to add some additional content to my pop-up? It could just be HTML, just static HTML, and again, it could be a script like we had before, where we could, for instance, have a CI, um, CI in an error state, and whenever we detect that, not only do we turn that CI red on the map, we can also actually run a query and return the HTML link to the particular CI that is in error, so it makes it very dynamic, um, and makes it sort of meaningful at a time, um, at a time that a certain condition occurs. So that gives you an idea of what's possible. Essentially, it's a map, and each marker on that map is a container that can then contain certain contents and can have certain styles associated to it. And all these can be scripted, so you can make them very rich. I'll show you a few more examples of what we can do apart from that simple floor plan. Um, another option is these geographical maps. Here's a sample map. And see, in this case, we're actually giving us a latitude and longitude, and we're setting some special you know, colors and marker sizes and zoom levels. And if we launch that, we're actually going to hop in here to a, to a simple map, and you can see this is open street maps. I can pan all over. I can zoom way out. Um, you know, the whole world is at our disposal here. And in this case, it's, it's interesting. Um, here I have one of those dynamic containers. If I click on this, it gives me a list of my incidents, my problems, my change requests. I'm logged in as a main user right now, so I won't actually have anything. But what this is going to do is this is going to do the assign to of the logged in user. And so um, for a certain location, I could actually have, for the person logged in, let them see their incidents, their problems, their changes, straight from a map view here. Um, in addition, I could do a, a point of interest here. This happens to be the Miramar, the, um, the Air Force Base point of interest. Click that up, and it's a link to Top Gun Wikipedia article. Um, or if I want to be very rich with my content, I can click here and even um, embed a, a YouTube video that I can watch right here from the map. Pretty powerful. Outside of that, um, another example that we've run into quite a lot with customers is people that want to map their floor plan of their data center. So here we can come and uh, just, this is just an image again on our ServiceNow instance. I can launch this map and I have a sample data center floor plan that, um, so these are each of our racks on the floor plan and I can draw, Im draw images over these little squares that represent each rack. Um, I've only done a few of these. You could do the entire floor plan and each one of these there's a link to view the rack elevation. Um, in this case, this one's red. And this is a conditional style that I've applied. It says if there's a CI in error on that rack, then um, go ahead and tell me that. And then I can click right in and view the rack elevation. And this actually links to another flexible map record where I actually have the rack elevation. And then here I can see, um, you know, here's a healthy CI. Here's a CI in failure state. Here's a CI in error state. And these are also conditional styles that only apply if a, if a certain condition occurs. And so for this case, here's one in failure state. That's a link as well. So I can click into this CI and actually pop up the CI record for the specific CI that is in error state. And then finally, um, just to get, I guess, outside of the box a little bit, if we go back and look at our maps, um, another option here, we have a sample fundraising graphic. So you can have some fun with these things. In this case, this is just, again, another little image uh, for a fundraiser for, for struggling developers. And all we've done is just created a static image, and we've drawn some icons over this. And these could... Um, could reference back to some fundraising records, some financial records in the ServiceNow system. And as we reach certain um, certain levels, we can automatically light up these things in the thermometer to create this, this, this dynamic image that changes as the conditions in the instance change. Um, so um, you can have some fun with this, and, and there are just a lot of things you could do. Track, um, track progress along a development sprint as you burn down certain hours and do it graphically. These are kind of things you could put up in your knock for the data center. 
Um, you could put up uh, on, a, on a flat screen, you know, in, in the lunchroom to show the progress on a fundraising goal. Lots of possibilities here. Um, and that's a, pretty much where I'll end it here. Uh, I think the best bet is for you to go and, and hop, uh, grab this and, and put it in your instance and really just explore these examples that are included so you can see what you can really do. Um, finally, I will just show you the properties over here. There's not much there, but we, we do allow you to set your defaults for colors, for marker style, um, for map markers, um, default latitude and longitude. Um, and then you also have some bugging that you can enable and disable. And actually, here's one more powerful part. Um, we do allow you to automatically generate a home page widget out of these maps. So say I have my sample simple floor plan here. Um, one thing that folks would like to be able to do is they want these things to be as, uh, as interactive as possible. So like for our data center floor plan, whenever something goes into an error state, we want it to pop up as soon as possible. Right now, these maps aren't active in that they won't automatically change whenever a new condition occurs. They only load up those changes every time the map reloads. So one way to make this work is you can have a map like this one. We can click Generate Home Page Widget. And for any map, it'll automatically generate that home page widget for you. So now if I go back over to my home page, I can click here, go find my flex map, simple, sample, simple floor plan map, click add here and instantly add that to my home page. And it's just as interactive there as it was the other place. And um, then if I want to, I can set this thing to auto refresh on a certain time period. So this would allow you to, for, inst allow you to, for instance, um, put in a data center floor plan, set it to a refresh period and have it refresh with the current state of that floor plan on a regular basis. So a lot of power here, um, a lot of value. And just one more thing I'll show you really quickly. So as we can see here, that map has its, um, its drawing capabilities enabled right now. Um, you can you know, continue to add markers and such. And like I said, you can lock these. So once I'm done and I've, I've finished this map, all I gotta do is click lock map, launch map. And now my drawing functions are gone. I can no longer add content to these, they're static. Um, so this is easily consumable by your end users. Um, you can still zoom in and out and do that kind of thing. Just can't add any more drawing to it. And when I'm ready to actually push this out to my users um, and make it available to them, you'll see back here on the page that I have this map URL. And this is the actual map to the UI page with the appropriate um, parameters on the end. This is how I access this map directly. So if I click on this, it's gonna pop this map up right there. So it makes it very easy to distribute the map. You can just send the link out to those that have access to it. Um, you can add it to your CMS pages, um, uh, really do whatever you like with that URL. And just a heads up, uh, you will not see that URL on these sample um, floor plans whenever you first import them into your instance because these are all um, URLs to the instance in question. In this case, it would be my personal instance, so that's not much use to you. Um, but as you create new maps, these will get generated um, on insert of a new map record. So you'll see those there. So that's about it. Um, I'm I'm very happy with how this turned out. It's very powerful, very flexible. I'm curious to see the uses that you guys come up with. And as you are using this flexible mapper, and um, if you find issues or if you find cool new things that, that we could add, don't hesitate to let me know out there in the comments on share. And um, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy it. And we'll uh, see you next time.